So in the last couple of videos we've been talking about if statements, you know, with if, else, and elif, the three sort of keywords in Python that relate to if statements, and that was a really good way of incorporating logic into our program. But now we're going to talk about something else which is also really fundamental to Python, and that's loops. So these allow you to iter iterate multiple times through a certain line of, or, you know, multiple lines of code in your program without actually having to write, you know, all those lines out multiple times. Um, so it's much more efficient and it sort of really improves readability in your code. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what a for loop looks like in Python. So bear in mind, there are two types of loops in Python. There's the for loop and then there's the while loop. So I'm going to just create a new file. And in this video, I'm just going to be talking about the for loop specifically. And I'll call this file loops and I'll put it in a folder. So this is the for loop. So we'll cover the while loop in the next video. It's, it's, it's another way of doing a loop in Python. They're both completely interchangeable with each other, so uh, don't worry about using one over the other. There's no real sort of speed advantage or anything like that. So just think about, you know, you can choose one or the other when you have a better understanding of the of both of the loops and how they work um, because you know it can be more suited to a particular situation that's why there's two of them but just bear in mind that they can both do the exact same thing uh, just sometimes one might take a few more lines of code than the other in general I'd say a for loop probably does it in less lines of code but you know sometimes a while loop can fit the situation better so that's why there's two of them anyway. So a for loop in Python looks like this. So we could type in for, and then what we're putting next is going to be a variable, which is just going to take a different value for each iteration of the loop itself. So let's go and demonstrate. And I'll just say for number in, uh, I'm gonna define a list. We haven't covered lists yet, but I'm just gonna say for each number, in what's called this Python list, uh, one, two, three, uh, I'm just going to print number. So when we run that, you'll see that it just prints one, two, three. And this is quite cool because it, what it was just done is it's executed this print statement three different times. And that's because the, the value of number has taken a different value for each particular iteration of the for loop. So on the first iteration, iteration number one if you like, uh, it'll take the value number one. Um, and then on the second iteration it took the value two, and then the third iteration three, etc. If you had more data in that list then it would sort of iterate more through that. So that's why you get one, two, three, uh, because it's iterated through this block of code which is just a line or multiple lines, you know, indented uh, in this for loop. That's that's what's known as a block in Python, and that's a really powerful way of doing, you know, multiple, uh, you know, prints. For example, uh, in very few lines of code, you can see I only used two lines of code there, but as you'll see in a minute, we can print many, many lines of code if we need to uh, using just this. So. I'm going to show you a slightly better way of doing that, and I'm going to make a variable called numbers, and, I, and I'm just going to set it equal to what we had here, and then I'm just going to say numbers here. So what this does is it's, it makes it slightly more readable for yourself or other programmers looking at your code to be able to say, okay, so for each number in numbers, print you know the number in numbers, so one, two, three. So it's a little bit more readable, and it's sort of slightly easier to understand uh, for someone that you know isn't you, or you know looking back on your code, you know after you've written it sort of a long time ago, for example. So that's one sort of example of a for loop. Uh, another thing you could do is do strings. It works the same with you know other data types as well. So you could do, uh, say, just um, type it out in words, for example. So one, two, three. So it doesn't have to be numbers. You can do that as well even though it says number here, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, that's that's just printed out one, two, three. So still three iterations, it still works fine as a loop. It's iterating through that code three times still. Uh, what we could also do is say range. And what range does is it 
sort of gives you, uh, you know, the numbers. So let's say we wanted the numbers 1 to 10. This could be a good way of doing that, you might think. So uh, we've defined numbers as being a range of 1 through 10. But it only printed out the numbers 0 to 9. And the reason for that is computers always start at 0. So this is not doing numbers 1 to 10. It does numbers from 0 up to, but not including, 10. So if we wanted to make it start at 1, we could do 1, 10. And then that's going to make it start at 1. But it's still going to finish at 9, because it's not including this number 10. So if we wanted the numbers 1 to 10, we could do uh, 1, 11. Uh, and then that's going to do start at 1, and then it's going to go up to, but not including, 11. So that should give us the output that we want, so 1 to 10, which is great. So that was a little bit on for loops, nice and quick. I hope that was, you know, useful to some of you. Uh, and we're going to cover while loops in the next video.